Mm, yeah, I look good, don't I? Mm. Today we have a 4090 in for repair. Customer has sent this card complaining about uh, issues with the port. 49 use commonly have a problem with the port. Uh, Big Boss had already disassembled this for us. That's what the heat sink looked like. And a lot of the 49 years, and I've been telling you on this channel many times, they have an issue with the port. And uh, let's have a look at this port under a microscope. So inside this port, we're seeing that one of the pins is burned. And um, the other pin is bent. And everything else seems to be okay, except the whole port is loose. How did that happen? I don't know. So we're going to have to fix that today. But first, before we start this repair, I'd like to thank the sponsor of this video, PCB Ways. They are the only company in the world that makes PCBs, so it's either their way or the highway. So obey, PCB Way. Yay. So what do we do first? We want to use a, uh, a voltage finder tool like this that you can buy at our online store. And we're going to be looking for a uh, short circuit. Let's go back. We're going to be using this tool. It's called a short finder that you can buy on our online store. And we're going to go over all of these power rails and make sure that we do not have any short circuits because replacing this port may reveal, um, may not help if we have a dead core, for example, which we won't know. So everything is looking good. I'm not finding any shorts, so we can probably go ahead and proceed with a um, repair of the connector. I hope I do have one of the connectors in stock. So let me go ahead and take a look here. Yeah, it looks like we do have this one connector in stock. I also have several of these connectors in stock at my online store. So don't forget to check it out. If you ever need a connector for your 490, visit our online store at uh, northwestrepair.com. Let's put this card on the stand so that we can work with it. I use these stands a lot. You can get them at our online store. We just got a, a large shipment came in. You can get them now. I don't understand why did the NVIDIA release a product that's so flawed to a point where even a stupid power connector doesn't hold on to the board. And the problem has to do with it, with the fact that it's extremely difficult to push the connector in and people applying excessive force. And that's how they bent these pins because the connector itself is made so cheap that even the grounding pan pins here that are on this end, they are not strong enough to uh, hold the uh, uh, whole assembly in place. And so therefore we now have this issue here. So I'm just gonna break it off so we can continue on. Special thanks to this uh, LED connector that's conveniently placed here on the side so that we can burn it completely by accident. So I'm gonna have to cardboard up with uh, cup and tape that you can also purchase at our online store at a discount price. Use the promotion code BLACKBEARD and uh, you'll get a 0.3% uh, uh, discount. Cup and tape is very important. Without the cup and tape, the United States would, would have never been able to land on the moon. So they use the cup and tape to uh, fake the moon landing. So anyway, let's start heating things up and I will be adding a low melt solder onto these pins to help the process. Let's bring in the low melt solder. Almost there. We're going to add some uh, NC559 flux. Uh, we are the leader, the leading supply of the NC55 flux by Amtec, the leading supplier in the United States. Even though the Amtec no longer exists, we still are the leading supplier of the Amtec. How that even works, I don't know, but it doesn't matter. What matters is that that we are leading, that we are the leading supplier of the Amtec flux, and that's all I care about. So we're going to continue on heating this up until all the pins have fallen through the holes, exposing all the holes. Now, I don't want to hit up the board too rapidly. Very carefully, very slowly, one pin at a time. Keep adding flux, it keeps evaporating. That's to be expected. But we can probably flip the board over to the other side to uh, work on the other end. More low melt. Low melt is your friend. I'm going to use a different flux. The NC559 doesn't seem to work very well for whatever reason. And we don't care. I'm just going to continue on doing our thing until we get all of these holes all the way through. We can use a micro tip to push whatever is in, is in those holes through the other end. There we go. Now let's go over this, to this side again. 
and see if we can start pulling these things out one by one. A little more flux here. More flux. I think I got all the pins out. Looks like there's a ground one that's stuck on the other end of the board. You know, might have to flip the board over one more time. Have a look. Yep, right there. All right. Now let's try and see if we can suck these holes out using a uh, Northwest sucker. That would be me. And there we have it. And the job is done. It looks very nice. As a matter of fact, let me go ahead and show you how nice it looks under a microscope. Let's switch over here. Right there. You can see that the solder has flown all the way through for each pin. And that is exactly what you want to see. That's how you know the solder job was done right. And it is now better than factory. Absolutely, absolutely perfect. All right. Okay. Let's check for any shorts using a uh, short finder. Make sure we don't have any shorts or pants or socks anywhere we don't want. 1.8, 1.2 memory. Looking good. Now let's power it on and see what it does. See, the thing is I hate about these connectors is that it has absolutely no back support. So if you were to push the cable in it like so, you're most likely applying excessive force onto this connector. And given the fact that, that the ground pin is so little, hardly anything is holding it in place. So the way I insert it is, well, I kind of support it from the back. But then you can't really do that when it's inside the card. Yeah, I think NVIDIA sucks. I think they should really give me a call and I could give them a consultation on how to properly design their connectors so that they will not end up being broken all the time. So let's flip the switch, see if we get a good power draw. Looks like we're pulling 1.7, 1.8 amps. That to me is a sign of a working GPU, but we won't know until we power it on by the motherboard. Who knows after all the physical abuse that we have seen that's left on the surface of this GPU heatsink, it may not even post. I don't know. So let me go ahead and remove some of that stuff off here. And uh, we'll plug in the power of the power supply. Just a sec. There we go. Now we're going to plug this one in. And if you're watching our channel for long enough, we don't care about the heatsink. So we're just going to power it on right away. No, I'm kidding. I'm going to put in the heatsink. So that, we, that way we do not overheat the core because we do know what we're doing. And off we go. And uh, I'm going to have to power off because I forgot to plug in the power. Uh, for, forgot to plug in the riser into the motherboard. So let's go ahead and do that. And one more time. And we got a picture. And we got a fix. It does produce a picture. So I'm going to have to have uh, Big Boss to uh, put it all together. Actually, no, I'm going to be the big boss today, so I'll put it together, run some stress tests, make sure that it works as expected, uh, build a customer, and uh, that will be it for this video. Uh, thank you for watching. I hope you guys have learned something today. And uh, don't forget to like and subscribe, and we'll fix something else in the next one. Okay, and don't forget about our sponsor, the PCB Ways, the, the company that everybody hates. Almost every tech channel is advertising this piece of junk. We're sick and tired of it. So make sure that you go on their website and let them know Joe Rogan sent you. It is surprisingly very difficult to overheat a 4090 Founders Edition. I would like to get one of those myself one day. Maybe when I get a million subscribers and I buy myself a million dollar house, I'll be able to afford a 4090 Founders Edition. Until then, I'll just have to continue on fixing these things. And for whatever reason, I cannot get a hold of the customer who owns this 4090. They used some kind of a strange uh, company email or something like that. And that email, that email no longer works. It keeps getting returned to me with a uh, undeliverable error message. So I cannot even contact the owner of this GPU anymore. So maybe this is the day where I get a free 4090. I don't know. Okay, so far so good. Let's crank out the resolution 1920-1080. Okay, I'm going to let the fan to kick in, and we'll see what it does. Okay, let's just go ahead and run 3D Mark. It's 
So the GPU seems to be running okay. Boy, do I look good, don't I? I think we are fixed. And today is 30th, so the moon is full and all the vampires are out on the loose. I'm not a GPU expert, so that's the best I can do is to take a wild guess and assume that everything's fine. And uh, if anything goes wrong, they can take it on uh, Big Boss and uh, he knows Kung Fu, so he, could he can deal with them. So there we have it, 490, another victim of a poor connector design, he is on my bench. And all it takes is these stupid connectors here. Uh, let's, uh, I'm gonna go, sh go ahead and show you how to connect your 490 counter positions properly, such a way that you don't break the connector. Then they go ahead and switch you over to the main screen, and I want you to see what I'm doing. Okay, so the connector is right there. So what you want to do is you do not want to hold it like this and just jam it in there. So f first, you want to slowly and carefully I'll make sure that it's aligned, and then gonna kind of push it in there uh, before you start feeling any resistance. So it will probably go three quarters in, and then what you want to do is you want to grab it by the base and you don't want to just force it in. What you want to do is gently wiggle left and right, very gently, and then you're pushing it in at the same time. So what you end up having is, you see this line here, the base of the connector and the base of the male end of the connector, you want them to meet. So you gently wiggle, gently, until it's all the way in, just like that. And now you have your connector properly connected. And with that out of the way, if any of my viewers are rich and able to uh, afford a second 4090 that you would be willing to donate to me, that would be very nice of you. I would greatly appreciate that. I could really use a 4090 for my editing. And uh, if I get lucky and one of you will actually do so, I will donate my 3080 Ti from EVGA that I'm currently using right now to uh, somebody. I mean... I'll probably have to do a poll on, on my next video or so, and then we'll see how that goes, but that's a problem for another day. So until then, thank you for watching, and we'll fix something else next time.